Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. For this week's video, I have my good friend Erin Moriarty, aka Annie, aka Starlight, on our show Amazon's The Boys! Woo! All right. Okay. Let's begin. Let's do it. Cheers! As we drink our true serum, this is gonna get real honest, guys. That's a that's good the name. point. True serum. serum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people commented mm -hmm. down below. Mm -hmm on the Instagram post mm -hmm. and they were saying how your characters are favorite. Overall, everyone on Instagram and like the outpouring of love that we get and the enthusiasm has been heartwarming. Yeah. So that's very sweet. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for the questions. Okay, okay. now let's dive right in. Okay. Okay, this is a fun one. Which rest stop eateries would Annie and Butcher argue <laughs> over stopping at? And which one would Huey try to offer as a happy medium? Oh my God. I feel like obviously since this entire season, she is dealing with a ton of stress and she, um, especially when she's, at, when she's with Butcher, she's dealing with moments of high tension. He would probably just want to get something to go like real quick, mm -hmm. right? He would want something convenient. He doesn't want to like dilly dally over anything. Like, and so I would say she'd want to do something like I gotta stop for like a milkshake and fries. You understand, mm. that is my medicine. Like she needs a milkshake, you know what I mean? Like she needs something that would remind her of what her dad would give her when she was when oh, she was young, so like a donut, sweet. right? I feel like Butcher just wouldn't want to stop for food. He just couldn't care less about what he eats. He, like he wouldn't. Yeah, he's on a mission. He's Whereas on a she mission. would be like, you don't understand. Like this yeah. is like I need to do this. I need to stress eat. So basically, yeah. I think that the happy medium between Butcher being like, I don't want to eat and Annie needing to stress eat would be Huey proposing they stop at a vending machine, Butcher gets whatever he wants, he probably won't get anything, and Andy's able to get her Almond Joy fix. I feel like Butcher would get one of those Hot Pockets. Oh, you yeah. Know? Oh. Sometimes, very Sorry, rarely, you I, can get a Hot Pocket I don't pocket mean to yuck anyone's machine. yum, but Hot Pockets, Hot Pockets. Right? Yum. Yeah. That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It would be something kind of obscure that he would get. Yeah. Something yeah. like... Sustenance. Speaking of Almond Joy, someone mm. else asked uh, okay. this question. What was it like eating all of those snacks, donuts, mm -hmm. Almond Joys on set? How many did mm. you have to eat? And what is your favorite treat? Mm. Okay, so I have a massive sweet tooth. So you'd assume that eating like that many donuts and that many Almond Joy bars would be a joy for me but actually if you're an actor you know if you've got to eat in a scene you're going to eat to the point of not wanting to puke because you've got to do so many takes of each scene that i ate less than laz in that scene that we were eating donuts it looked in but so he, good when you took a bite uh he ate he must have eaten like 10 donuts that night that we shot that scene we had more to shoot after since i need to work after this i don't want to be in a donut coma we're going to have to work till six in the morning so they helped me out and i think i only had to eat like two which is not a lot for a scene like that and the almond joys i think i probably collectively because i was taking little bites ate one mm -hmm. just because now oh, i've just learned one. just one Amazing. collectively maybe two Amazing. but um i do have a massive sweet tooth and my favorite treat like in general yeah i like local artisanal ice cream like really good ice mm. cream and i don't like gelato i like ice cream that's chunky like the oh, cookie the dough or the yeah, yeah, or yeah, the, the, the almond ones. brittle or like yeah. anything that's got chunks in it i'm down yeah. so that would be my favorite like an old-fashioned ice cream i always get sprinkles if they have it and i get it on a cone like a child and i love it and that's my favorite i eat dessert every single night mm -hmm. a day is not complete for me without dessert dessert and wine mm -hmm. dessert and wine that's my thing cheers to that cheers. dessert and wine and alcohol <laughs> and tequila What's your favorite treat? So I didn't even know what an Almond Joy was mm -hmm. until the boys came mm -hmm. out. And at our premiere, we mm -hmm. got the Almond Joys as, as a treat in our bag. Mm -hmm. And I put it in the freezer mm. and then ate it. It was uh, divine. Amazing. I love so good. freezing like sweet treats, like um, candy bars and yeah, stuff like it that. It tasted like ice cream Yum. with like chocolate. Oh, it was amazing. But growing up, I think my favorite was a Twix. I, I was gonna, okay, my yeah. favorite candy bar is yeah, Twix. Yeah, yeah. I just wanna publicly declare that Almond Joys are amazing. There's a scene that involves Black Noir having an allergic reaction to an Almond Joy, and that was inspired because on our Comic -Con. way back from Comic Con, Carl Urban, our very own butcher, overheard that Nathan was really severely allergic to nuts because he has to be, he's the type of allergy where if he's on an airplane, they need to announce on his behalf that no one can consume nuts. Yeah. And so he did it and Carl Urban heard and he's like, that's hilarious. What if Black Noir's Achilles heel is nuts? And so it was yeah. incorporated into the show. Yeah. Little fun fact. I've carried his EpiPen 
a few times because oh you know God. it's it's so big. Yeah, it needs <laughs> to be more portable. It's oh, it's literally so big. this big. They need to figure out like something to make it because you put it's so yeah, big. Where are you gonna put Wait, that in I your pocket? Say, love you, Nathan. Um, I still love almond joys though. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I have like a list of costume questions. Oh, that so costume, I'll just you guys. Like, I have a. I, I'm going to be completely honest. I have mm -hmm. a love hate relationship with it. Oh yeah. What? Is it like to be in that costume? Which one do you prefer? Which version do you prefer? Mm. And if you could change one thing about it, uh -huh. what would it be? Okay, so I definitely like Starlight's original costume, which mm -hmm. we call Starlight 1.0. And the other one, the jargon that we use internally on set is the one that is more revealing, we call Starlight 2.0. And I just like the original one because to me, whenever you're in a costume like the second one that 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 you know is mm -hmm. objectifying and intentionally so just me as a human being inherently like I i'm automatically going to have a bias against it and the original one in, is is hers and it reflects to me her you know her kind of true self and so i like the original one more mm -hmm. there are pros and cons to both in terms of comfortability like mm -hmm. Like the technical aspect yeah. of the computer, yeah. Yeah, like the second one has super high heeled boots mm -hmm. and I am terrible in high heels. Yeah. And it's super tight and, I, and I'm and i not private about this. Like I wear silicone breast inserts. I wear silicone like a, like a butt pad to make myself look mm -hmm. more hour, hourglass. The first one I definitely prefer, but the thing about it is in order to create that shape and that fit, it's mm -hmm. it's so tight. And I've joked about this before, but it's true. Like, it kind of feels like my organs are getting mushed. <gasps> the I'm first one? The first one. Oh, no way. It's so tight. And I need to have people help me get into it and get out of it because it's so tight because oh. it's so fitted. Like, it, it is, to it make is. it look that good, it's got to be so mm -hmm. fitted. So let's, like, literally it doesn't matter how much I eat for brunch, uh, for lunch when we have, no matter what, afterwards I'm like, wow, I can't digest my meal. Wow. So my thing is I'd love for Starlight to have a hybrid costume between her first and second that reflects her evolution it's matured past her first. Yes. I would like something that has evolved a little bit. Like I would like a hybrid version and yeah. an in-between because she's grown up so much that I don't think the first is, is also her yeah. anymore. So that would be, that's my hope. Yeah, I think Starlight is one of the characters that has been developed the most. Right. Maybe the most. Well, it's because she is, went from like yeah. zero to 100. She went from yeah. being the most sheltered human being to being in one of the darkest like groups of superheroes in the world. And yeah. she just, so it accelerated her maturation yeah. process. And so I would actually like to see an entirely, a Starlight 3.0 that is a true reflection yeah. of her. But the first one's my favorite because, you know, having played her, I'm attached to her and, I, and I'm defensive of her. And I think the first one is 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 not objectifying to her and, and and one that she designed i love the scene when you're in the hospital with butcher mm. looking over huey mm -hmm. and you say he's too good for us it hits home because mm. you were huey at the beginning of season one i know and doesn't it reflect so strongly like mm -hmm. i think she she's gonna find herself she's gonna make the most of it mm -hmm. but when you go from being a sheltered iowa girl yeah um and how, what Vought did to you. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah. I know that she's going to make the most of it and become stronger because of it, but it's true. Season two is a lot of her kind of grappling what she's learned and still trying to be herself, and it's hard. But this is reflected in her wardrobe choices at the end of the season two, but I yeah. think she starts to make her way back to herself. Yeah. No, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Starlight 1.5 is what we're going for. Exactly. exactly. That's it. We Starlight 1.5. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. little older, but still like her still true, her true earnest yeah, yeah. self. Yeah. Which like she, at the core. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. How did you first feel when you got into that revealing suit? And was the perspective that you got from the sexist motives of Vought something that you could relate to? When I first got into the suit, it was weird. Like, I've never worn anything like that before. And as Starlight or as Aaron, it felt so... Uh, unnatural for mm -hmm. me to wear something like that. In yeah. fact, I've kind of avoided that type of thing my whole life. So it felt weird, but but totally appropriate given the storyline. So mm -hmm. I was game, of course. Mm -hmm. Some of the things that I've done to kind of fit a mold that I've believed has been expected of me in my job or in general mm -hmm. has been more self-imposed than externally imposed. Mm, okay. Like I definitely went through a period of coming to Hollywood and um, gaining roles and losing roles because of more superficial reasons mm -hmm. and then 
digesting it in a negative way and so imposing certain ideals onto myself Mm -hmm. my internal monologue towards myself has been really bad in the past and I kind of got to the point where it was exhausting and you know the people that I admire and the people who I feel really embody themselves are people who just totally honor their own independent aesthetic that is unique to them and that's when I kind of was able to start the process of getting over it but that whole concept of like conforming and objectification and luckily we work in the industry at a time when the me too movement is happening and when diversity is valued or Mm -hmm. starting to be valued more i would say the concept of conforming and fitting that ideal was more self-imposed than than casting at directors ever yeah like they didn't explicitly say anything but you think about it i completely relate to that because uh, you know you want to be what they want you to be exactly exactly Erin, as a sexual assault survivor, I would like to say thank you for wow. accurately portraying us. My question is, how do you mentally get into those shoes of someone mm. who has you know, been through that? Thank you. First of all, that means so much that you have said that. And I can't even fathom the strength that you've even summoned in asking this question. But in general, is just I just have a lot of respect having done research about sexual abuse victims and I can't empathize with you but I can sympathize with you and I'm you know my heart is with you but it's not the first time I've played a victim of sexual abuse and you know um part of the sexual abuse storyline on our show is about how kind of rampant it is and how many people are complicit in covering it and how it's really kind of um, an epidemic, especially throughout this country, of being abused and then not being able to um, feel comfortable to come forward as a victim. And so prior to this show, I had played a sexual abuse victim who was based on a real person. She was a college student and she um, was gang raped by a group of football players and this happened and basically she was gang raped and she tried to come forward and because there's so much money behind football teams and universities they then retaliated against her and in order to not lose money and to avoid the shame and the legal uh, repercussions on their team they then portrayed her in a light uh, through the media that implied that she was asking for it. And it was horrendous. But this really happened. And you can, you know, you can do research on this. Yeah, that's horrifying. And so I had to play that character. And I was really terrified going into it because the emotional stakes and the, and the need to never be lazy in a single moment and really portray the, the repercussions on a human being of what this does to you. The weight of that was not lost on me. So I did a lot of research for that role Mm -hmm. and we then got the boys and and there was this sexual abuse storyline. So the experience I'd had on that show combined with this and just doing immense amount of research for me really, really was is in addition to research. um, It was a matter of just really kind of tapping into an emotional place and a place in my head that you wouldn't really want to tap into, but I knew I had to do the storyline justice. I am really fortunate in that. It's not something that I've experienced in, but just even the mere experience of researching it and trying to go to that emotional place has given me the most respect and sympathy I could imagine for people who have been through that, you know? I'm very grateful for the Me Too movement, but I think we've got a long way to go. And hearing that one sexual abuse victim says that I did it justice means the world. Yeah, I I just really appreciated this comment. So thank you so so much for that. Yeah. Yeah. If the boys had powers, what powers do you think they'd have? Kamiko aside, obviously, because she is a superhero and has dope powers. Okay, so I just thought of Jack. And you know, like Jack is a very tall, long dude. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, it made me think of Ezekiel. And I'm not, they're so different. Yeah. But like, I remember Jack joking when we were doing season one and he was touring apartments to stay in when we were in Toronto. Mm-hmm. And he, there was one apartment that he literally, one. he couldn't move into because uh. he went to go look at the apartment and the bottom floor, the basement, he <laughs> walked into it and he hit his head. What? Like his height was higher. No, he's so tall. Oh, it was just like he short, literally yeah. couldn't get in. Like he was like, oh I need God. to talk to you. So, I th- feel like for him, it would lean into himself, like his own innate quality of just yeah. being a really long person. So maybe he would be something that's Ezekiel-esque and stretching. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his nickname
name on Ooh. set for us is Daddy Long Legs, yeah. which sounds really weird, but it's honestly yeah. he's just a long dude. So I feel like his his would have to do with like that stretch arms his legs. and obviously yeah. he would use it for good. Whereas Ezekiel yeah. didn't. No. What do you think? No, I completely agree. He's a long 100%. Dude. 100%. Um, 100%. So then yeah. Butcher would probably be something that would be. I, I mean, feel like he resembles a little bit of like Wolverine. Yeah, completely. Like com- combative completely. movement. Completely. Yeah. It might be something Wolverine esque, like you're able to summon up like some type of. Yeah. I mean, super strength, obviously, but you know how he has the blades yeah. coming yeah, up? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Something really lethal. And yeah. like, because he's ultimately a good dude, but it, he's got a lot of demons. So it would yeah. be like, and Wolverine is like that. So that's yes. good. Laz, okay, so Laz is obviously the OCD clean freak. Uh, uh, mother's milk. He's a mm-hmm. control freak, right? Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. what like OCD. It's control issues. Yeah. So I feel like if he got a power and his issues manifested in a power, it would be moving things, like yeah. literally, like being able to move objects and throw them at ah, people, which okay, is really yeah, powerful yeah. when you think yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Frenchie would be something like blowing so he, shit up, probably. I guess. Yeah. Oh, you're Chemicals. totally right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, like basically being a superhero who has a bomb superpower where they're able to. Do you know what I mean? Blow shit up. Yeah. yeah. Without like preparing things. Yeah. It's just coming exactly. out somewhere. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Which is powerful as hell. Very so, powerful. Yeah. And scary. But yeah, I think that would be. I think that'd be it. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that mm-hmm. would be it. Good one.